Hi guys, Anthony Turnham here. I've pulled myself out of my COVID sick bed to do a little edit on this photo here. Now I do really like this photo as you see it straight out of camera, but what I want to do is create a more moody and more dramatic image from this. And so let's jump straight into our first tool that we need to look at, which is develop raw and just get the overall base image looking good. I'm going to go for a camera matching profile and I usually like to go for something that's pretty neutral. If you don't have camera matching profiles, don't worry, the Luminar default will do you just fine. In fact, I'm going to do this edit with the Luminar default profile because for a generic profile, it's actually really good. So first thing we want to do is make sure we're happy with our exposure. So I'll just give that a little bump and the smart contrast, where you you might normally think, well, we want to boost that up, add more drama in. I'm actually going to take this the opposite direction. And while that's flattening out the contrast slightly, it actually starts to reintroduce the colors that are there in the original file. Whereas if I push this all the way to the right hand side, you'll see that we get a greater contrast through here, but you're almost going to like a black and white image where you've got this land mass here and the bright clouds. And that's not what I want for the start of my edit. For sure, I may reintroduce that sort of level of contrast towards the end, but this initial application of the develop raw tool is so that we can create a really strong base layer from which we can build our edit. So we want to make sure that all the detail is there in the highlights and the shadows. So with that being said, I'm going to grab the highlight slider and just bring that down just so that we're not bleaching this area out through here. And if I grab the shadows and start to bring that up, things are getting a little too washed out. If I take them to the left, things are getting a little bit too dark in the shadow regions as well so for the shadows I think I'm just going to leave them kind of around the center point now we've got all the color information in our highlights we've got detail in the shadows now we can grab the white point and actually bring that up slightly and bring the black point down just to extend that dynamic range I'm going to come down to the color section here because I just want to play with the temperature slider. Now while what the camera thought the white balance should be when it shot this was pretty accurate, I'm going to grab the temperature slider and push it just a little bit more in towards the cool side of things because I just think that's going to help with our moody feel to this photo. Curves is a really great tool for adding contrast to your image but I don't recommend doing that in this initial stage. We've done the setting of the contrast with the actual sliders and we can revisit the curves in a final pass. So let's have a look at our before and our after, before and after. Okay, let's close that down and let's jump into the Enhance AI and let's grab the Accent AI slider and start moving that up. And I always recommend doing this inside of Luminar just to see what the AI is actually recommending for improvements to the photo. And if we flick between the before and after, what I like to do is just analyze the photo and I just look for specific areas where this effect may be helping our image. And then when I've decided on areas that I like, I just get the paintbrush Set the strength somewhere around a third, 32 is fine. And then I just click and I paint the effect in where I want it. And so I like the fact that it's increasing a little bit of saturation and contrast on the horizon. I also like that it's adding detail into the sand. And so I'm just gonna paint over that area. I'll reduce the brush size and also utilize this effect just along the sea here as well. And now we can just toggle out before and after. And I may just remove a little bit off this cloud here because it's just getting a little bit oversaturated. And just like Enhance AI, I also like to play around with Structure AI. So what I like to do is just crank it all the way to 100 and then just cast my eye around the frame and ask myself that question, where do I like this effect? And then just by toggling it on and off, it's really easy to see what it's doing. And then we can use our paintbrush and just come in and selectively paint this effect in where we want it. I'm gonna drop my strength slightly further for this one just so I can be a little bit more incremental with how I build this up. Most of the action in this photo is all happening around the horizon line and that's where I want our viewer's eye to go. And so I'm gonna use this tool just to help guide the viewer's eye more towards this area. So you may have noticed that the detail on the island was improved by this tool. So if I toggle this on and off, you can see that we're enhancing the foliage on this little landmass here. And I also really like the detail that we have in the sand here as well. And so what I'm gonna do is actually just paint over the lines in the sand. And that way the structure AI is actually just gonna to help to enhance the contrast just locally, just over those little areas of sand. Let's have a little look how things are moving along. Here's before the structure AI, here's after. And you can see by selectively painting the effect in only where you want it, we can really take control of our photo edit and get a much more refined look. Using the black and white conversion tool is a really powerful way to create a monochrome image, but we can also use it in quite a creative way with our color photos. So let me show you how. As I jump to the luminance tab, which controls the brightness of these individual colors, you'll see if I grab the blues and I start bringing that down, we can actually control the different brightness values in the photo 
based upon these individual colors. And that's really great. But not only can we create a black and white image this way, but we can also use it in our color photos. So all we need to do is come back to the saturation tab and just click these sliders back up slightly. And now we've reintroduced color into our photo, but we still have the brightness set by these controls here. So you can see I can fully control the brightness of the blues with this luminance slider. And as always, by toggling the eye tool here so we can see our before and after, we can see the changes that this is making. And I'm not overly convinced by the effect that I've created, but hopefully you can see from the before and the after the way in which these luminance and saturations can actually control your color photos rather than just your black and white. But let's suppose I don't really like how it was before and I'm not completely in love with this look. Let's say I just want 50% of this. Well, there's no opacity slider for this. It's not like in Photoshop where we could just set the layers opacity to 50%, but there is a way we can do this in Luminar Neo and that is with our masks. And so I'm just gonna come over, select my paintbrush and I'm just gonna crank the opacity to 50. I'm going to make sure that the brush size is to its maximum and then I'm just going to paint over the whole image and once I release this it's a bit of a hack but we now have 50% of this effect that we just created. So here's our before Here's our after. As I said before, I really want to lead people's eye in towards this interesting area along the horizon here. And so the next tool I'm gonna to try is the Relight AI tool. And as you probably know, this extremely clever tool creates a 3D map based on our two dimensional image. And so I can brighten and darken the foreground and the background independently. And so what I might want to do is actually darken down this foreground slightly grab the brightness far and start to bring that brightness level up. So you can see as I push this all the way or bring it down, we're just lighting those two areas separately, the foreground and the background. And the depth slider just lets us set how near or far that transition point is occurring. I'm not sure I'll need it in this case, but another really cool feature is being able to warm up or cool down the near and the far point independently. So we could cool the sand down and then warm up the background, for instance. But I'm just gonna double click those to reset them in this case. At any point during your edit, it's always good to look where you came from and where you've got to and just ask yourself, am I trekking along in the right direction? And while I really do like the original, it's not the intention for my edit in this case. I want a cool, blue, moody, broody shot, and that's what I'm getting right now. So yes, we're heading in the right direction. Let's carry on. I might open up dramatic here, give this bad boy a good crank as well, and just play with the slider. Take it all the way to the top, bring it back down. And again, just ask myself, do I like this effect? And if so, where do I like it? I really like that it's bringing out more detail in the sand in our foreground, but I don't like what it's doing on the horizon here. It's creating a washed out, overly bleached area through here, and I don't like that. However, on the left hand side with the faint clouds we have here, I do actually like that. So just look at this little area with the clouds and I'll toggle off and toggle on that little bit of detail through here. It's actually really nice. And so again, I'm gonna grab my mask and hopefully by now you're seeing there's just so much you can do with a tool and then applying a mask and just choosing whereabouts you want to paint that effect back in. I may put a little bit over the sea as well. Leave this area alone because I don't want that bleaching effect. But now I'll make my brush nice and big and paint over the sand here. And that's gonna to start to bring back more of that detail and help lead our viewer's eye into the scene. So let's toggle our before and after, before and after. And if you feel like you've overdone it in any area, like I do just a little bit through here, we can come in with a, an eraser and just take that effect back just a little bit. One technique that works quite well when you want to bring your viewer's attention to the horizon in your frame is to actually darken down the foreground as we saw before and also darken the sky as well. And that creates what I call a light sandwich. So you have a brighter bit through the middle and then darker bit on the top and the bottom, which we've got going on already. But I'm gonna see if I can accentuate that by applying the develop tool one more time and actually bring the exposure down. And as you can see, that's darkened everything down. And again, I'm just gonna get my paintbrush tool and I'm just gonna say, I just want this effect across the top of the frame. I've painted that in with 35%. Let's do another pass. Let's go again. Okay, that sky's looking pretty heavy and ominous now. Let's look at our before and our after, before and after. 
Now I mentioned curves before and how they can be really useful for introducing contrast and absolutely they can but what I want to point out is we can't just go ahead and start applying curves here because all it's going to do is apply curves through the area where we painted that effect and that isn't what we want to do so I'm going to double click those to reset them and this is one of those things I really love about Luminar Neo is I can just close that develop tool down that then drops into my edit section so I can come back and change this effect at any point if I want I can darken that sky down even further if if I want to bring the highlights down I can make whatever change I want that's still accessible to me but in the tool section if I want to which I do I can just open up a brand new develop tool and now when I come in and I grab the curves and I do whatever I want to do let's just boost this up for demonstration sake you can see that this is applying it obviously to the whole image now it's not defined by the mask that I painted previously on the last iteration of the tool I have a brand new instance of this tool and I'm free to tweak this as I like if you're interested in the curves tool and would like to learn more about it I've done a whole video dedicated to how this works and breaking it all down so I'll link to that in the description below but if I double click these points just to remove them at its most basic if we bring the curve up we're brightening things up if we bring it down we're darkening things down and depending where you put the points on the curve controls either the highlights if you put a point here controls the shadows if you put it down there and the midpoints in the middle so we can brighten our highlights we can darken our shadows and we can push the midpoints up and down obviously that is far too extreme so let me just rein this in and actually see how I want to set this for my photo okay I've set the contrast where I want it but I'm feeling like this is getting a little blown out again so brilliant thing Thing is because this is all within this develop tool I can just grab the highlight slider and control the highlights so I'll just bring those down just a little and if I toggle our before and after we've got the best of both worlds we've got nice strong contrast now but we're not losing the color saturation in the highlights okay we're closing in let's look at our before and our after pretty big difference and something I've decided I want to do now is dive into the creative section and I'm actually wanting to create a bit of a glow around this area I really feel like this area is a nice juxtaposition to all the dark gloominess we've created around here this little pocket of light relief through here I really want to enhance that and I'm wondering if I come in and add a soft glow through this area so let's start with soft focus grab the amount and as always not be stingy let's push it all the way to 100 so we can see exactly what's going on on here and that's going to give us a much better indication as we flick through the tools as to what they are doing to our image so the autumn effect and autumn effect soft is just completely bleaching out this area the glow on the other hand was just a little bit more subtle which I like we can soften it up slightly perhaps even add the brightness because as always what I'm going to be doing here is coming back in with my paintbrush and just painting the effect in where I want it so the fact that we've got a lot of light bleed up here over on the left hand side I'm not worried about that at all so I'm just going to grab my paintbrush bring the strength quite low for this one and also reduce the size of the brush that's my left bracket key that enables me to do that and then as soon as I click it disappears and I'm free just to paint my mask in only where I want it bring this strength back up just a little bit just so we can get this done just a little quicker maybe bring some of the effect over this side have a look at where we came from and where we've got to it's always a good idea just to keep tabs on where you came from and where you've got to and then it's much easier when you're doing this comparison to decide whether you've gone too far and exactly where you want to set the amount to 100% is way too much zero is none of the effect and then I can just ease this up and yeah, maybe somewhere around 50 is fine those of you with a keen eye may have noticed at the top of the screen there's quite a bit of dust on my sensor and so there's a couple of things I could do so obviously I could come into the erase section here and a really cool thing with Luminar Neo is we have the remove dust spots tool so if I click that Luminar is going to analyze my photo and get rid of those for me and on the whole it does a really good job however I'm going to reset that because I'm actually going to crop my image and I know that I'm going to lose this area up here anyway and the reason I'm cropping is twofold. I feel that there's a lot of negative space in the clouds here that aren't really doing much for the image. And I also don't need to show as much of these lead in lines from the sand as well. And by cropping in, it's going to make the landmass here just a little bit more of a feature. So let me grab the handles, bring it in a little tighter. And the second thing I'm able to do is just make sure my horizon line is straight. And so when you click outside of your crop tool and you start rotating it, you'll see that you get these guidelines. And so that's really useful just to make sure that you're happy that your horizon 
horizon is nice and straight. And now I can make the decision of whether I want to centralize this land mass here, put it right in the middle of my frame, or perhaps a more interesting crop would be just to put it off center and then the land mass is balanced by the brighter section in the sky. And so I've got the dark and foreboding bit on the left and the bright and the light on the right. And once I'm happy with that crop, which I am, I just close the tool. Luminar applies my crop and I'm going to call that done. All right, my favorite bit. Let's take a look at our before. There we go. A nice image I wanted to turn into a more moody, more contrasty shot. Here we go. That's our edit inside Luminar AI. I really hope you enjoyed this edit, guys. It's been a brilliant reason for me to get myself out of my COVID bed. So if you like the edit or just appreciate the effort for the video, do me a favor, give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Cheers, guys. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.